Yeah, welcome to welcome everybody. And thanks a lot to everybody who made the way up in, until this uh, hidden corner <laughs> on the academic track. Um, uh, yeah, the, the 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 following talk is about the deployment or deployment mechanisms of um, artificial and in, uh, intelligent enhanced services for climate resilience information systems. So basically, the questions of how to uh, bring scientific algorithms into cloud computing services so that the end users can have an easy uh, access to information on demand. That's, uh, and uh, for sure, well, it's filled up with OGC uh, standards because uh, yeah, I'm uh, a staff in OGC. OGC has uh, two uh, big parts, big programs. So one is the standard uh, standardization program. Uh, we had been hearing that in many uh, different talks about the OGC standards and that then, but then on the other side, there's also the innovation program where we are involved in quite a lot of different projects and uh, the ones which is a bit related to climate are here, but uh, feel free to uh, check out the website. So there are plenty of other projects as well. And uh, that's uh, where we are fiddling around uh, with uh, technical challenges and trying to find good recipes and uh, if we are making a good job, then maybe they're ingesting into the uh, standardization as well. Um, and then uh, also, well, OGC is, uh, or in the OGC uh, innovation program, we are working on quite different levels of uh, technical uh, ma uh, ma 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 majority levels. And uh, so uh, from very basic concepts up to then the testing and uh, making the uh, interoperability experiments. And, and then also well, in terms of uh, projects and that we have small projects, uh, little coding sprints for a couple of days, or then also well, the test beds which are running over a couple of months or then long projects for several years. Um, so that's just kind of uh, showing the flexibility that we can do. And, <clears throat> and uh, now, uh, if you are focusing on climate, uh, that's something what we are pitching up currently as a new road in uh, OGC, or that a new domain that we are uh, focusing on. And uh, last year, and that we had kind of a lot of uh, different uh, ad hoc sessions, climate sessions during the, the OGC member meetings, as well as then also dedicated or, or in line with the United Nations um, COP26 or the, re, uh, the, um, um, the regional climate weeks in Africa and uh, Asia Pacific, etc. And then uh, uh, colleagues from ECMWF, for example, from ESA, from NASA, from uh, yeah, from the Canadian colleagues, Australia, etc. They they were uh, contributing to these um, sessions, and then we had a, a very nice exchange and building up a community and about the questions on how to uh, implement or how to respect fair principles, so findable, accessible, interoperable, reusable uh, aspects in the climate domain. And that not only for the data, but then also for the entire system itself. So how should um, climate information, uh, climate resilience information systems be, um, be uh, designed so that we can have a better synergy and that we can have kind of a good e exchange. What <clears throat> that's what we are talking about here in the phosphor G very often. And uh, out of this, all these discussions, we have been setting up a climate resilience domain working group where you are all welcome to join and uh, con uh, continue with the discussion. And then the next uh, working group meeting will be in uh, the 5th of October during the OGC member meeting in Singapore, where we are electing the chairs. And uh, yeah, you're more than welcome to join. What we are talking about here and that, and, uh, is always the question that the, in climate or in climate related domain, uh, we have a huge amount of data, uh, which you can see here on the left side. And uh, the question is always how to concentrate that, how to uh, merge that down, how to uh, fusion the data, how to bring that from the raw data into a sensible uh, information that is then useful for well the scientists or policymakers, for non-technical persons, for, for a variety of very uh, homogeneous, uh, a, a very heterogeneous uh, user group. And that, that's sub -sum summarized in climate service or science service if you are continue, if you are including all different domains as well. And um, 
on a technical level, and, that, and here comes the uh, the question of uh, interoperability and uh, and uh, the fair principles. And that uh, what we try to do, and that especially then in the context of uh, OGC, is building up the blocks in the way so that they are fitting to each other, um, yeah, quite easily. So um, that we that then, if you would like to set up your own system that wherever uh, you are and however the system should look like and that all the blocks which are there are fitting together and you can build it up and in a kind of in a cubic and that uh, building block so, uh, system so that's the entire uh, idea of uh, all the standardization so why we are sticking to standards so why it makes sense to stick to standards in uh, in uh, in contrast of uh, building up your own individual um, uh, ideas so that's what we what we hear what we are here, and then uh, in terms of the climate or climate related uh, building blocks, things that we are not starting from scratch, but there is quite a lot of things already out there. Uh, what I'm showing here is all open source. You can find it in the, the uh, in a in a GitHub organization called Birdhouse. Um, but then left and right we have uh, other things also lying around. There are two things already implemented in ECM. WF uh, C3S is the rooks and then also the deployment uh, mechanisms with Ansible Doggers and uh, with Conda. Rooks is uh, a service for uh, polygon subs uh, no, um, um, subsetting, bounding box subsettings. So that's already implemented there. And we are in close collaboration with uh, ECMWF and talking about how to bring the other blocks into the climate um, data store as well. But uh, yeah, feel free to uh, to take that uh, if you have um, a need on it. And um, uh, I'm showing you now a, a few other things what we have been uh, developed and which is upcoming um, where you can see that. And the idea is also, well, if it is working fine, so if we are kind of sticking to the uh, the standards, if you're sticking to OGC standards or what is a standard, whatever, then it's possible to kind of exchange and and uh, uh, and have the, the 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 synergies in between of the different services, and then during the uh, or within the the domain working group focusing on the United Nations policy frames uh, that is always the questions of how to en uh, to to enable the synergies in between of the different countries and the the services which are around. Uh, one of the things that we have, so now it starts to become a bit more academic and more technical, is uh, to help out and building up these blocks uh, yourself. So if you have a good algorithms that you would like to wrap up and then maybe uh, provide that for C3S or for whatever uh, service you are focusing on, then we have a template. Uh, which is called the cookie cutter, and you find that also in the Birdhouse repository. You just need to install that. So, a uh, couple of uh, letters, a couple of words, a small command, and then you are you have it in place. And uh, you um, by running the cookie cookie cutter, it's asking you a couple of questions. Takes not so much time, some minutes and uh, you have the skeleton ready and the skeleton is then in line with all the OGC standards so it is uh, respecting all the required uh, uh, yeah all the all the required uh, standardizations and uh, then comes the 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 big work that you need to do is that fill it with your algorithms and uh, kind of the code that you have uh, needs to be uh, set in place. And then also here you need to respect and how to pass through the different arguments um, that, uh, it is, that, yeah, that is then fully automatically running on, on the cloud. But once this has been done, and that once you have uh, ingested that as well, then it's ready um, uh, to, to implement and deploy that in C3S, for example, or um, wherever you, you want to have that. So that's kind of here we were working on that to lower the barrier so that the community can grow and then everybody who wants to uh, provide services in uh, international or local uh, climate resilience information systems, that's the way how you can do that or that's the way we are proposing. One of the things, uh, this is a bigger project where OGC is involved uh, and together with a consortium, quite scientific uh, focused consortium. This is a, a project, a European project, CLIND. It's called CLIND Climate Intelligence. Here, focusing on artificial intelligence uh, to have a better understanding of extreme events and extreme event detection. 
And um, so uh, what we're doing here with uh, with the colleagues, with the scientific colleagues, is they are providing uh, the algorithms, the uh, the, uh, the scientific algorithms, and how to detect uh, heat waves, uh, uh, tropical cyclones, and uh, etc. Things like things like that. So um, and uh, focusing on uh, uh, seasonal forecasts. So that that's the dedicated. Um, uh, these are the the, uh, the the input data where we are where we are focusing on, and then the part of OGC uh, OGC innovation program is that we are wrapping up these uh, algorithms into um, OGC API processes on, or formerly that was web processing service, you know, and uh, in in the way I was uh, I was showing before, and that having a, a building block, and then with the idea and that by the end of the project is going to be ingested or it's going to be provided for uh, for the Copernicus services. Whether it's provided, they have to do the deployment on their side then. <laughs> but uh, we are far ahead on the schedule. So the first processes, the first prototypes are already in place. So we can uh, we have plenty of time or to 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 think about how to uh, fiddle around and how to bring that into the the climate data store and that, and also we're currently. Climate data store is being uh, rebuilt, and that we can think about how to uh, bring, uh, yeah, how to um, uh, uh, deploy that in an in an easier way. So the first prototype that we have. Uh, in place, which is up and up and running, uh, there is a uh, the URL and that Clint Digger said, and that so the, the the German Climate Computing Center is is hosting that for the moment. If you would like to play around on that, it's uh, it's it's yeah, just uh, type in this this URL. And uh, what it uh, what the process is doing is based on artificial intelligence. So in the middle, you have a data set with quite a lot of missing values. So basically everything. <laughs> is missing and then uh, on uh, the left side you have uh, uh, an, uh, a, a, a training data set so the ground truth and where the artificial intelligence is being being trained on and uh, kind of learning how the the, uh, the the values should look like and then on the right side you see the result and the results are quite uh, promising and quite astonishing so, um, we took an, uh, uh, an an example here in Africa because of well, Clint is basically focusing on, on Europe, but uh, there were not so much data sets with uh, too many missing values, so we had to to take a data set from Africa. And uh, currently we are fiddling around also with other uh, sources, so radar uh, data, and that, that this is uh, uh, being being possible as well. And the algorithms behind is coming from uh, your face recognition and uh, algorithms. So when you have a photo and uh, there is something missing in the uh, in the um, in the picture, or there are scratches inside, so that the, the algorithms could. Um, uh, could uh, be be trained and uh, fill in uh, the the rest of, of of the face. So that's the the scientific algorithms behind. And but uh, if you have more questions on that, then um, my colleagues from Dikereset can tell you all the details about that. Then uh, another one is uh, more on um, uh, yeah is uh, we are we are facing here the the challenge of data pipelines and that. Is uh, heat waves and warm nights, and uh, what we are uh, doing is, uh, is are several steps. Then, so there are web processing services with uh, multiple multiple steps, and the first is a detection of the uh, of the event, so uh, definition of the of the index, which is being uh, detected by 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 machine machine learning algorithms, and then once the uh, once the um, uh, the event is being detected, and that we're piping through quite a lot of uh, data and that making um, a detection of the drivers to understand why this uh, extreme event has been occurred. So if you have a heat wave, why is the heat wave occurring? So it is uh, depending on, I don't know, soil moisture or the westerlies or what, what is the reason for this event. And then, and that's been then, uh, yeah, been uh, detected by as much data as you can ingest there. And once this has been done, you can make the assessment of the drivers and uh, do the prediction in the uh, for the uh, for the for the future. These are then the the storylines which are coming out. Uh, 
we have several test regions because well, uh, machine machine learning we, you need to reduce. Uh, you can do that uh, um, on a, on a larger uh, larger domain. So we have some test regions um, in Europe as well as in, in in Africa and try to understand better how good that works. Okay. And um, to understand, well, so what we are promising for uh, for the future that is uh, missing values is already uh, very uh, very uh, is is already in 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 place. You can uh, take it and uh, improve it on your side as well. Heat waves, we are on we are in on the way of. Uh, having that as a prototype up and running quite soon, and then we are also focusing on hydrological floods uh, with uh, using uh, using artificial intelligence, and then drought vulnerability and trop tropical cyclones, which is coming then from uh, ECMWF itself. And I think with that, I oh know, yeah, and uh, he, for sure we have uh, documentation in place. So if you would like to <coughs> uh, do it yourself, if you want to have uh, an own uh, uh, climate building block uh, on your side, and that if you would like to contribute to that, and that then here is the documentation. It is uh, the very draft and uh, very raw beginning. So um, if there is something missing, uh, don't hesitate to reach out, and then we are completing that. It will start to grow in the future. But uh, you are yeah, more than welcome to uh, con contribute, and with that, I'm... I'd like to thank you and I'm looking forward for the discussion.